What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to simplify square roots, all right? But the first thing I wanna remind you of are perfect squares, because knowing your perfect squares are gonna make breaking these down a lot easier, okay? So perfect squares are just numbers that you can take the square root of pretty easily, right? So for example, four, nine, 25, well, actually I skipped one, 16, 25, 36, 49, right, 64, and we could keep going, right, 81. So these are all perfect squares because these are all easy numbers that we can take square roots of, right? So the square root of four is equal to two, square root of nine is equal to three, square root of 16 is equal to four, right? So it gives you a nice clean answer, okay? So if we wanna break something down like this, the square root of 24, you wanna try and include a perfect square, okay? Because the number 24, there's different ways we can break that down, right? We can break it down into two times 12, three times eight, uh, or four times six, okay? But again, you wanna choose a pair that has a perfect square because it's gonna make your life a lot easier, okay? So in this case, we would want to break 24 down into four times six because four is a perfect square, right? So the square root of 24, we can break this down into the square root of four times the square root of six, okay? And then if we simplify this further, what is the square root of four? Well, it's equal to two, right? So we're multiplying two times the square root of six, okay? And then this would be your simplified answer right there, two times the square root of six. Now, let's say you didn't pick a perfect square, all right? It's not the end of the world. It's just gonna take a couple extra steps to solve the problem, okay? So let's, in this case, use three times eight, just so you can see how it's different. So if we broke down the square root of 24, and we said that's equal to the square root of three times the square root of eight, all right? That's still true but we can actually keep breaking this down, okay? Because here, eight, we can actually break down into two times four, right? So then we can say that this is equal to the square root of three, and then this eight right here, we're going to break up into the square root of two times the square root of four, okay? So now here you can see we have a perfect square, so we can simplify that, right? So this is equal to two. So then this is gonna be equal to the square root of three times the square root of two, times two. Okay, and now in this case, you can see we have two square roots left over, and we can actually just combine these under one big square root, okay? So we can say that uh, the square root of three times the square root of two, we can just say the square root of three times two, okay? And then we're multiplying by this two out here, right? So times two. Now three times two is equal to six, so here we're gonna have uh, the square root of six times two. And I can flip them, right? The radical normally goes at the end, so I could just write this as two times the square root of six, okay? So then you still get the exact same answer, right? But it obviously took a few extra steps, so that's why you wanna use a, a perfect square, like four, right off the bat, because that definitely simplifies your work, right? So now let's try this next one, so the square root of 50. Okay, so again, 50 we can break down into different ways. We could say five times 10, but we can also say 25 times two and we would want to break this down into the square root of 25 times the square root of two because the square root of 25 is a perfect square, right? Which is equal to five. Okay, so then this would be equal to five times the square root of two, right? Pretty easy. Now here we have a negative square root, right? So the negative square root of 108. So nothing's different here. We're just gonna tack on a negative sign at the very end. So 108, there's a bunch of ways we can break that down also. But here, the most convenient one, which might be a little hard to see, but it's actually 36. Okay, so we can break this down into 36 times three. So the square root of 36 times the square root of three, okay? Now the square root of 36, again, is a perfect square, right? It's just equal to six. So then this is equal to six times the square root of three, okay? But remember, our problem originally was negative, so then our answer right here is also negative, so it'd be negative six root three. Okay, now here we have a fraction. Okay, so the same way we can split these up into basically a bunch of different radicals, we can do the same thing with a fraction. Okay, so the square root of 19 over 16 is equal to the square root of 19 over the square root of 16. Okay, so the numerator and denominator, they each get their own radical, okay? So then we can simplify this. So the square root of 19, the, uh, well, 19 is a prime number, so we can't really break that down anymore, right? So that would just stay as the square root of 19. But in the denominator, we have the square root of 16, which again is a perfect square, right? So the square root of 16 is equal to four. 
Okay, so then your final answer right here would be the square root of 19 over 4. So here we have the square root of 20 over 64, right? So again, we can break this up into the square root of 20 over the square root of 64, okay? Now 20 over here, there's different ways we can break it down, right? We could do 2 times 10, but we can also do 4 times 5. And we're going to want to do 4 times 5, right? The square root of 4 times the square root of 5, because 4 over here is a perfect square, right? And then in the denominator, we just have the square root of 64, which is a perfect square, right? So that would be equal to 8, okay? Now on top, uh, again, we have the square root of 4, which is equal to 2, so we can simplify the top. So this is going to be equal to 2 times the square root of 5 over 8, okay? And then we have these whole numbers, right? So 2 over 8, we can reduce that, right? We can reduce it to 1 over 4, okay? So then this is going to be equal to, on top, we have 1 times the square root of 5, which is just equal to the square root of 5. And then that's equal, or that's over, sorry, 4. Okay, so then your final answer right here would be the square root of 5 over 4. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.